For bomb squads, the primary objective has always been clear. But over time, their techniques have evolved and media representations of their trade have not always been accurate. Well, this is a pretty shonky job. I think I could dismantle this. It looks like Beirut to me. Let's get the hell out of here. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. In today's installment, we're counting down the five most interesting things we could learn about bomb squads. Number 5. Bomb disposal practices evolved during World War I. Over the course of the First World War, munitions manufacturing was a flawed process, and this caused major problems on the battlefield. Many shells never detonated. On top of the sheer destruction and chaos the Great War brought, nobody quite knew how to deal with the unexploded bombs, or UXBs, that littered battlefields. So informal bomb disposal units learned the appropriate skills. Seeing how UXBs could actually be more destructive than bombs that exploded immediately, during World War II, German forces dropped many bombs on England that had delayed action fuses. Ah, a load of junk. Britain reacted by training large numbers of bomb disposal personnel. Soon after, Germans implemented anti-handling devices into their bombs designed to kill those personnel. This was just the start of a long-running battle between bomb makers and bomb disposal experts to stay one step ahead of each other. Today in the 21st century, the rise of global terrorism has ensured that that race continues. Number 4. The Wheelbarrow and Robot originated in 1972 By 1971, the Irish Republican Army began to actively engage British troops in Northern Ireland, planting various types of makeshift bombs. As a result, the British adapted with the creation of a remote-controlled robot known as the Wheelbarrow. It was so-called because Lieutenant Colonel Peter Miller literally built the thing on top of a motorized wheelbarrow. The first model was steered with ropes and had little more than a grappling hook in the way of tools. Bomb disposal robots used today are often still known as wheelbarrows, though they've got more than just a hook on them. Over the next six years, over 400 wheelbarrows would be destroyed in the line of duty presumably saving an equal number of human lives. Number 3. Many techniques are used for bomb disposals. Really elegant string of pearls configuration. Unfortunately, incredibly unstable. Because of that arms slash disarmament race we just referenced, many specifics of the explosive ordnance disposal trade are kept secret. But we do know some things. Contrary to popular belief, modern bomb technicians handle their business remotely. Of course, hands-on techniques were used in both world wars, but that was mainly before the wheelbarrow came along. And while protective suits do exist for technicians to execute physical inspections, distance is key. So if everything looks okay when I get down there, I'm just gonna set it up and we'll bip it. Modern wheelbarrows are often equipped with tools that allow bomb techs to also use high-pressure jets of water or acid to remotely dismantle bombs. Of course, before they go trying to drown or melt every suspicious package they find, they'll often use a portable x-ray device to get a look inside. Number 2. Hollywood is a purveyor of bomb squad myths. The bomb squad never gets here on time, okay? Anyway, it's 8 minutes and 31 seconds. Raj, please. Hollywood continues to feature the red switch myth. In other words, if there's a bomb in movies or TV, someone just has to get up close and personal to cut the wire. In reality, they would much rather deal with it from a distance. Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Firing now! They may even use a sniper rifle to shoot a big hole through the thing. They also don't work in heroic one-man teams. There's a green one. Oh, there's like a bunch of green. No, there's usually at least three techs working together, plus ideally others to watch the perimeter and provide support. What kept you? So why does Hollywood continue to peddle these myths when you can easily fact-check this stuff online? Probably for entertainment value. And possibly because the pyrotechnicians and practical effects crews on movie sets are not bomb techs. Get back! Take back! Number 1. Shrapnel is not the biggest threat for technicians. Anyone who's ever played a first-person shooter game knows the deadly part of a frag grenade is the shrapnel. So you might assume that shrapnel is the bomb tech's biggest fear. However, they are 90-pound blast suits made from Kevlar, foam, and plastic protect pretty effectively in that regard. Almost too well, actually. Those layers make it hot as hell for the tech inside, giving them as little as 10 minutes to do their work in extreme conditions before the heat stress is overwhelming. Some suits have built-in cooling systems, but that adds to their weight. Even more deadly than the heat is an explosion shockwave. 
The highly pressurized supersonic blast wave can cause serious internal injuries, potentially collapsing lungs or exploding other organs without necessarily causing any visible external damage. It's only in recent years that bomb suits have started incorporating various kinds of foam to deal with this threat. So, what fact surprises you the most about bomb squads? And do you know of any movies that really get the facts right? Did I say blue? Rick, you said blue. Well, I meant red. You sure? Right, look, Raj, we can do it your way if you like. My way, I don't have quiet. For more 90 pound top 10s and unexploded top 5s, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You can defuse it, right? Are you kidding me? Look at all this crap. It's like a million wires in here. I'm like a three wire guy.